Hi, David Williams here. This video is about electrons and holes in semiconductors, and we're going to look at both intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. The material from this video is based on the material in the book, the ebook, Lessons in Electric Circuits by Tony Kupalt, and I took this material from Volume 3, Chapter 2, which is on semiconductors. The links that you see here are included in the video notes, so you can click on those to see the book for yourself. Carbon, silicon, and germanium are all semiconductors. And when I say intrinsic semiconductor, what I mean is it's a pure semiconductor. It's made up of only elements, carbon or silicon or germanium. Now, the thing that makes these semiconductors is the fact that they have four electrons in the valence shell. And by having four electrons in the valence shell, we're only looking at it here in, the, in a, in a two-dimensional view. What we look at here is an attempted three-dimensional view with here is the atom in the middle, and these little clouds here represent the electrons, the four, one, two, three, four valence electron from the atom, which then form bonds with adjacent atoms, adjacent semiconductor atoms. Semiconductor atoms assemble into large three-dimensional crystal lattices, as is shown here in these pictures. And it doesn't matter which atom we're talking about, as long as it is all one type with four electrons in the valence shell. These pictures show first how one atom joins with its neighbors, and these building blocks can fit together to create a larger building block. And then many instances of these larger building blocks fit together to create the overall crystal that is the three-dimensional structure of an intrinsic semiconductor. So when doing our analysis here, we won't look at these semiconductors in their 3D representations. Instead, we'll look at them in their 2D representations because it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So whether it's carbon or silicon or germanium, we're going to look at these as a two-dimensional representation where the red dot in the middle represents the nucleus and all of the other electrons that aren't in the valence shell, and then surrounding that are the electrons of the valence shell where four electrons come from the valence shell of the atom and then four electrons are shared with, with the neighbors to create this crystal structure. Conduction in intrinsic semiconductors is interesting. If you were to have this semiconductor at absolute zero, so no thermal energy, no added energy to the system at all, the semiconductor would be uh, an excellent, if not perfect, insulator. And that's because there would be no free electrons available for conduction. They are all bound together within the crystal lattice. However, when you add thermal energy or energy of some kind, what happens is, is one or, or several of these atoms, several of these electrons, are going to get enough energy to be moved out of the valence, out of the valence shell or out of the crystal structure into the conduction band. So let's pick on this one right here. So let's say there is enough energy for this electron to move into the conduction band. So we've got an electron sitting here that's now a free electron because of the thermal energy that's free, that, that's going to contribute to conduction in the intrinsic semiconductor. But what we, have, what we have left behind is a hole where that electron used to be, and that hole is going to be positively charged. So conduction in an intrinsic semiconductor is going to consist of these free electrons that, that are freed from the crystal structure by, the, by thermal energy, along with these positive holes, which are kind of bound to the crystal structure, but they're not bound in place. So what's going to happen is, let's say I applied an electric field across the semiconductor, so positive on this side, negative on this side, what's going to happen is all those free electrons are going to move this way. This hole, which we can consider a, a free charge carrier too, is going to move towards the negative side. But it's not going to just move at random. What it's going to have to do is move. It'll, it'll be like the hole is moving, but what's going to happen is this electron is going to go and fill this hole which will leave the hole there, and then this electron will go in this hole, which will leave a hole here, and then this electron will fill that hole, which will leave the hole here, and this electron will go here, which will make the hole here, and this is going to continue on down the, the crystal structure here until we're, we're off the page. I mean, it'll, it will continue, but I, won't, I don't have anywhere more to draw. So that electron then fills this hole, and we have this hole here. So it looks like there's this, this discrete thing, this hole moving from where the hole was generated through the crystal structure towards the negative side. So the bottom line then in, in an intrinsic semiconductor is we have this flow of electrons 
which would be that way with this electric field positive on the left, negative on the right. And we'll have this flow of holes going towards the negative. So two things are contributing to, to conduction in, in intrinsic semiconductors. And the interesting thing, and well, another interesting thing, is the warmer the, in, the semiconductor gets, the more thermal energy there is in the system, so the more of these electrons will be able to get, will get enough energy to, to get out of the valence shell and into the conduction band. And so the warmer it is, the better the conductor, the better the conductor the semiconductor is. So doping a semiconductor. This is the process of adding an impurity to the semiconductor to make it into a better conductor. And the reason that you do that, that this is done is to create the devices that actually do interesting things in when we're talking about semiconductor devices, so the things like diodes and, and transistors, require taking an intrinsic semiconductor and adding an impurity to it. So one type of impurity that can be added is to create an n-type extrinsic semiconductor. And an n-type dopant, what, we, what would happen is all of these, let's say these are all silicon atoms, a number of these silicon atoms would be replaced by a phosphorus atom. And the interesting thing about a phosphorus atom, it has one, two, three, four, five electrons in its valence shell. And so if we replace some of those silicon atoms with phosphorus atoms, what we end up with is those four, four of those five phosphorus atoms are going to be shared amongst the silicon neighbors of the phosphorus, but then there will be one extra electron. And this, this extra electron, which is not going to be bound to any neighbors, is going to be more or less free, just like that one extra electron in the valence shell of a conductor is free. So as you add these impurities, these phosphorus impurities that have these extra electrons, you end up with a whole bunch of free electrons that now increase the conductivity of the semiconductor. The other type of dopant is a p-type dopant. So again, if we think of all of these as silicon atoms and we replace some of those silicon atoms with boron, we end up with a structure that looks like this, where boron has one, two, three of its own, uh, own electrons that it can share with the neighboring silicons, but it's missing that fourth one that silicon had. And so what you end up with is this extra hole, which is basically an extra positive charge because there's this lack of electron. Now it should be noted that in both the p-type and the n-type case, it doesn't actually make the semiconductor itself positive, positively charged or negatively charged because the boron itself is neutral, the number of protons is going to balance the number of electrons that it has. So this hole will just be a free charge carrier, but it doesn't actually change the charge of the whole structure. So anyway, this hole will be a positively charged charge carrier that's basically free to move around. But again, it's going to move in that same manner that I showed with the intrinsic semiconductor. An electron will move into the hole here, which will make a hole here. The electron will move into the, the new hole, make, make a hole here. Etc. and it's going to move down the line. And if this was negative on this side and positive on this side, this, this process would continue all down the semiconductor. So to wrap up, we have two types of extrinsic semiconductors. One is the n-type semiconductor where an extra electron is added, and the other is the p-type semiconductor where an extra hole is added when, when these impurities are added to the, to the semiconductor. And there's two terms that are important to know. And the, these relate to, to the concepts of the, the p-type and the n-type. In the n-type extrinsic semiconductor, there are a lot of extra electrons. So in this n-type material, the majority carriers to that, that, that are the, the charge carriers are these extra electrons. Because of the thermal process, there is still going, still going to be a small number of holes that are created from the thermal energy for one of these electrons in the silicon to jump into the conduction band. So there still will be some extra holes, but there's so, so many fewer holes than electrons that we call the holes the minority carrier because there's not as many of them. In the p-type material where you created these extra holes, the holes are the majority car carriers. And again, because of the thermal process, there will still be some of these electrons that will jump into the conduction band so those will be contributing to the, to the conduction process, but there's so few of them, we call those the minority carriers. So in another video, I show how to put these P-type and N-type materials together to create interesting devices. The most basic of those is a PN junction, which creates a diode. So I hope you learned a little bit with this introduction to intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.